Hi, my name is Sierra Brown and I did my Tech Talk 2 on the Memoristor, the component that will change the world of electronics. You may ask what a Memoristor is, and it was conceptualized in 1971 by Leon Chua, who was a physicist, but was eventually built in 2008, about 37 years after the idea was conceptualized because the materials and resources were not available when it was innovated. It is worked on in Europe and China. It is based off of connecting the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor. The name memoristor is a combination of the word memory and resistor. So it is claimed to be a new era of electronics, which is now known as ionics, or soon to be. So it is based off of a transistor, which was the old component, and now it is made into a new component, which has four dim dimensions instead of just three. So this is a picture of the first memoristor worked on 37 years after the idea was conceptualized. So what does it do? It retains the amount of charge flowing through instead of loses, losing information. So RAM can never be lost and the ability to es escape binary code, which binary code is a series of numbers and symbols explaining the memory and ways to track memory on your computer. So its abilities are explained to be similar to the brain. So instead of using binary code, it has multi-levels that can remember things similar to the brain. So this is a picture of the extra many levels that the memoristor has. So it has a lot more than just zero to one. So a normal transistor only has components on a circuit that flow through a substrate from zero to one. And so the memoristor allows other levels to be reached, so 0 to 1, to 1 fourth, to 1 half, to 1, to 2, to 3, to even 4, which has never been seen in computing before. What does this allow? It allows a new material to be a substrate. And it does not just require silicon and rigid materials that are normally used for a regular transistor. So how is this going to be beneficial in the future, especially regarding schools? Is because how, many, how often does a student lose work because of something that goes wrong with their computer? Either power outages, loss of internet connection, or something accidentally is not saved and they can't recover it. Computers have been updated a lot more these days so that things like this does not happen as much, but the memorister will help prevent the loss of students' work altogether. So help, it will also help staff and faculty with grading in regards to capacity, which means that staff and faculty, such as professors, will be able to store a lot more memory. For example, ASU has 85,000 students about, or even more, and not all of our networks are able to capa capacitate all of the materials and grades and everything that they need to keep on file. Also in the classroom, thousands of lab reports and documents are created by students daily for classes. And this database of a memorister will be able to store all documents and check for plagiarism. An example of this is Turnitin.com, which I have used previously in all of my other classes to check for plagiarism, but it does have a limit on how much it can store and also it is having controversy because a lot of people say that this Trinidad.com has been saving their work but 
they never signed an agreement or verbally or had like a document that allowed Trinidad.com to keep their documents. There's a big controversy over that. Um, the memorister would help with this because it would be used daily and you could just put it in the contracts that the school signs for each class. So when will this be available? It is predicted that it will be available in the year 2020. When it comes out, it will just be called The Machine. Um, this will utilize electrons for processing, photons for communication, and ions for storage, which is a lot more similar to how the brain works and opens up a lot of new available space and efficiency. So this is a video and it's someone who is working on a memorister that explains it a little bit. Revolutionize our way of computing and bring an end to the classic silicon era of microchips. Jennifer Rupp is a professor of material science at ETH in Zurich. At just 34, she's leading research aimed at reinventing the entire world of electronics as we know it. This is called uh, electronics, where you had all tripsters of what is about to come, is what I personally rephrase as ionics. Transistors act like a switch, turning off and on as electricity flows through. One for on, zero for off. Membristers work differently. As electricity flows, little holes or defects enable ions of information to pass through at much greater speed and efficiency. Way beyond one and zero to two, three and four, and so on. So our whole world lives on computing many zeros, many, many ones, yeah, by these electronics. A memristor can have multi-levels. You could have allow at a lower power consumption to compute more information and have higher amounts of data storage and completely new ways of logics for our computers. So this is the site that I got most of to all my information off of. It's a CNN article. There is not much else on the web about memoristers, but I found this. Thank you for watching.